Okay. Welcome to the very first episode of Ride, Wrench, Repeat. This is a YouTube channel that I created, Maintenance Mike, about the new KTMs, Huskies. This is more geared towards trail riding and uh, the guys who are buying the 300 KTM XCs, the Husky TX300. Um, what I have right here is a brand new 2020 uh, three, uh, KTM 300 XC fuel injected. Okay, let's get to it. Um, today I'm going to get into um, what I would recommend, um, the top nine parts that I would put on the bike um, after you get it home from the dealership. Um, why nine and not ten? I don't know. We're not conventional here. Um, I want to mix it up and uh, uh, be different. And uh, Plus, I only have nine parts in front of me. So um, today is going to be the top nine aftermarket parts I would recommend. Um, now, I live here in Southern California, so um, the riding conditions are going to be different. Um, if you're back in Michigan watching this or Ohio or, or uh, in Europe or wherever, um, you know, the conditions may be a little different. Um, but I would say, you know, if you're somewhere in a desert region or anywhere, yeah, anywhere in the, the southwest United States region, then uh, this should apply for you. Um, and pretty much all these parts are, are quality parts and, and they can be used anywhere, really. So first off, I would recommend changing the shock spring. Um, that's if you're a heavier rider or a lighter rider. The stock KTM and Huskies come with a 42 Newton meter spring. Now that is sprung for approximately 165 pound to 187 pound rider. Um, so if you're in the, within that range, um, you should be good. Now double check, I believe that is with the rider with gear. Um, I could be mistaken on that, but uh, I recommend that you just go check out Racetech's website, um, racetech.com. You go there, you put in your bike, you put in you know the year the make model of your bike you put in your age your riding style and uh and it tells you exactly what the spring the shock spring rate should be it'll also tell you what your air fork uh, pressure should be um, it's an excellent company um, they are not a sponsor of mine i do not get paid from i don't get paid from anyone so that's the great thing about my channel um, eventually if companies want to send me stuff cool but I'm not going to be biased. Um, if somebody sends me a product and it's not good, I'm not going to talk about it. Um, I only talk about products that I stand behind, that I've used, that I trust. Um, if there's another brand out there that you think is better, um, I'm open to ideas. Um, send me a link. Um, um, leave a comment in the comment section. Uh, if you're a manufacturer, if you want to send me stuff, I'll be more than happy to try it. Um, if uh, you know if it's if it's uh, trail worthy then uh, I'll definitely uh, put it out there um, but uh, for years I've been buying uh, race tech products and the race tech shock springs are awesome they're cheap they're easy to install um, and again they like I said they have a great website so if you're new to this or you're not sure what you need just go to their website and check it out they have a spring calculator they do they do the math for you so uh, check that out it's really awesome Okay, second product, the skid plate. Definitely want protection. Now I have here an AXP Racing um, skid plate. I've used uh, TM Design Work skid plates. They're great. Um, they've been harder to find through my supplier. Um, doesn't seem like they have a lot of stuff in stock. I don't know what's going on with them. But um, AXP is, is, is who, uh, who my current supplier is uh is is carrying and uh, i gotta say this is the third axp skid skid plate that i've purchased recently uh for my bikes and uh it's it's great it's thick plastic it uh the mounting hardware is there um everything's you know it seems like good quality i will say if you wear a size um you know if you wear probably a size 10 boot or larger um you will have to go in and do some modifications to that um, I'll, I'll probably put out a video later on how to do that, but basically on the right side, there's this big lip that sticks up and uh, I just take a, a grinder or a Dremel and I just cut it off because my brake lever sits here. So with my size 12 boots, when I go to push down, sometimes I'll hit this plastic and it gives you a false brake reading. And uh, 
or a, a brake feel and you think you're pushing the brake and really you're hitting the skid plate so I always trim that off um, that would be a nice little thing if they did that from the factory but um, or from the manufacturer but uh, you know it's not that big of a deal and it's you know it's kind of a custom thing so if you don't have a big boot um, maybe it's not worth doing it maybe that's why they don't do it uh, but I've had good luck with these plates um, I've also had uh, I believe it's uh, S by S or S SCS or S S X S plates I'm not sure I can't remember the name but those have been good too um, it just happened to be this is the plate they had in stock so I went with it it's like 150 bucks done well worth the, the, the investment okay now these next two kind of go hand in hand um, and, and um, if you live in a hot climate you know if it gets up around you know 80 degrees 85 degrees or higher in the summer and you're gonna you plan on riding in the summer um, I would definitely recommend that you put a fan kit on so here I have a trail tech fan kit um, I just buy the universal ones and I wire them on they're not hard um, you can pay like 30 or 40 dollars more and you can get this the bike specific fan um, you know it they're all the same so just go out if you can find one online and you can save yourself 30 or 40 bucks for the universal one it's fine um, I will tell you the part number for this fan is a 732 uh, FN3 that's Frank Frank Nancy 3 um, so you can see right there easy to install I'm gonna do a video on that and I'll show you how to do it on the 2020s it's not hard to do um, so recommend that now um, Again, I said that you know these kind of go hand in hand, but I would recommend radiator braces. I would probably recommend the radiator braces first. Although my last four bikes, I haven't had radiator braces on. Uh, I've been lucky, knock on wood. I haven't had any issues. Um, I've dropped my bike a few times, but I haven't uh, haven't busted a radiator. Um, but uh, you know, if you're going out, you're going if you're going to Baja and you're going to do big rides, um, I would definitely recommend that you get get some good radiator guards um, these are the bulletproof design radiator guards um, I went with black just because I like the look um, silver is probably good it probably reflects the heat um, and I know they're like 20 bucks cheaper to do silver so whatever you know it's it just depends on your your what your the look you're going for um, it just happened the dealer I went to uh, had these in stock and uh, I bought the black ones um, but these are definitely a quality product um, there's some other products out there that are probably uh, just as good. Um, there's a lot of them out there that, that aren't as good. Um, so, um, you know, I think the bulletproof ones are probably one of the better ones. There's a company called Flow. They make really nice ones. Um, stay away from, uh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to bad mouth any companies, but those are the two companies I recommend. Again, if there's better products out there, uh, if you're a manufacturer, then send me one of your products. And uh, if it's, up to snuff then uh, then I'll definitely uh, plug it okay the fourth thing I recommend this is super cheap uh, it's like 20 bucks I think I ended up buying this one on Amazon this is uh, this is a fuel tank filter and uh, you know it's like 20 bucks it basically just you unscrew the, the 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 cap the gas cap and you drop it in there and it fits perfectly in there um, so uh, definitely recommend that that's a cheap little um, preventative thing that keeps uh, keeps dirt and sand from getting into your fuel so we have a shark fin now it's been a long time since I've run a shark fin um, I used to buy them back in the day um, TM design works made a really nice one and it had a caliper guard that was made out of the ABS plastic um, really nice um, I really like the TM design works um, I couldn't find it this time around so I don't, again I don't know what's going on with that company but um, they make a good product this is a bulletproof designs um, this is the second one of these I've had um, great product it's just qu high quality um, the reason I went back to these I stopped running them for a long time I'm like you know what I'm just gonna watch out for boulders and I ride pretty gnarly stuff and uh, I try to be smooth I try not to hit my bike on anything but you know stuff does happen um, but I've started looking at my rear rotors on, on my bikes, and there's the, all the rotors are banged up. So you know what? I got a brand new, fresh bike here, and I just said, you know what? It's worth the it's worth the extra hundred bucks to bolt this on and protect me. 
Um, especially, you know, I plan on doing some Baja trips soon, so um, it'll be nice to have the, the peace of mind and uh, the protection there. So, uh, yeah, definitely well worth the 100 bucks. Get a shark fin. Okay, next is, um, you know, this is, a, so I'll, I'll go to the Spark Arrestor. I got a Spark Arrestor. I'm going to try out this Pro Circuit. Um, I haven't put it on yet, but this is a uh, Pro Circuit Type 296. It's a two-stroke spark arrestor developed for reduced noise output. Now, normally, like on my other bike, I have a Pro Circuit um, factory sound pipe, and I love it. It, it sounds super loud. Um, I take that bike to the track a lot, so it's nice to have the clean, crisp, barky sound. Um, but, you know, for trails, I kind of want to keep it more low-key. I want to keep it quiet. Um, plus, we go on longer rides on trails, and I don't want the noise. So I'm, I'm really excited to try this out. Um, I used to use the FMF pipes, and that's a great company, too. Um, I don't really think you can go wrong. It's, it's, it's all preference when it comes to pipes. Um, I'm really stoked to try this because this one does have the U.S. Forest Service uh, seal of approval on it. So if I do get pulled over um, that is one thing that the rangers out here do is they take a stick and they will shove it down your tailpipe to make sure that you have a screen in there um, so this one has that so um, I think you know this is like 150 bucks online um, it's cheaper than a ticket and uh, and I'm hoping uh, I, you know I will do a, uh, uh, a video on this um, down the road I'll do a follow-up video on how this sounds um, and maybe I'll do a video a sound thing so you can like you can listen to it um, versus a stock muffler um, so we'll, we'll get to that but I'm excited about this but you know again if you're if you're uh, not worried about that then uh, you can you can chance it you can risk uh, getting a ticket um, they're just really cracking down out here I think they're cracking down everywhere so um, I would just uh, do your part and spend the 150 bucks and make the Rangers happy okay so eighth on the list is uh, this is a, uh, a rear brake extender, cylinder extender. Um, it's basically like a heat sink. On you know, it's made out of aluminum. It screws into the rear brake cylinder, and it allows for more oil to you know for it to hold more oil. Also, it gives it um, more area to dissipate heat. Um, I'm a bigger guy, so I have problems with that. I have problems with with me heating up the rear cylinder all the time. I get to the point where I'm smoking my brakes just from using it and then sometimes the brakes go out. Um, that's not a fun feeling when that happens. Um, so I'm excited to try this out. This is like a $10 part. Um, this is a Tusk part. Got it from Rocky Mountain. This is their own brand. Again, it was like 10 or 15 bucks. So I just um, opted for that over the name brands that were like double the price. Um, so yeah, I'll report back on that and let you know. Um, again, this is not, not anything that you have to do right off. Um, that's just something I wanted to try. Okay, last but not least, our pegs. Um, this is, again, this is a luxury thing. This is not something you have to do. So if you're a taller guy, 6'1 or above, I think you will really benefit from this. Now, if you're a tall guy and you have really short legs, I think you'll be okay. But if you're just a tall, average guy, or if you're a tall guy with long legs, this is huge because um, it comes with a little offset pack where you can offset the pegs back and down a half an inch. And I'm telling you, that doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, but uh, it, it makes a huge difference. When you get into rides where you're doing 50 miles or more, um, I know for me, my legs will start cramping. And it's just from the angle that I'm sitting at. And, and when I have that extra half an inch, it's... Uh, it's huge. Um, so um, these were like I think 150, 200 bucks. Um, not the cheapest thing. These are these are made by Fastway. So these are the Fastway Evo fours. Um, I have them over there on my 18 Husky, and I love them. They're great. Um, and then I went and rode the stock um, 300 TX fuel injected Husky. I went on a trail ride, same trail that I've taken this thing out on a dozen times, and uh, I started getting cramps. And I'm like, what's going on? And I'm like, oh, it's, it's the pegs. I'm run, riding the stock pegs versus those pegs. Um, so the pegs do make a big difference. Plus, it's a wider, bigger peg, 
um, and it, it gives you more surface area for your boots so it's more comfortable when you're riding it's easier on your feet um, it's just it's to me that's a, that's well worth the investment um, I would recommend that you go with those over going with bar risers um, when you when you get bar risers or you get a high bend bar you're kind of throwing the geometry of your whole steering system off um, I've tried every type of riser out there there's none that feel good um, to me in my opinion um, if you're just cruising and you're taking it slow and you're not getting uh, you know you're not really looking for performance then uh, then you might want to try something like that but uh, I think when you start jamming along on the trails um, I think you're gonna you're gonna find that uh, you don't want to mess you don't want to mess with your bar bend too much you don't want to go up too high you don't want to you don't want to go too forward you don't want to go too back um, so um, that's that's my take on it that's my experience um, but again everybody's different everybody has their own preferences so if it's something if there's something here you don't you don't agree with um, that's fine like I, I don't expect everybody um, to be on the same page as me um, because uh, I'm certainly not on the same page as everybody else. That's why I'm sitting here doing this. Uh, top nine things that I recommend that you you know you put on your bike. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm gonna put together a video where um, where I, it shows me installing all these different parts um, in case uh, you've never done it before or if you uh, just if you're curious to how you know how it's done. Um, you'll see uh, I'll have a nice some nice instructional videos on that. And uh, yeah, so please leave your comments. Um, any feedback um, is greatly appreciated. I'm new to this. I'm not a YouTuber. Um, I'm just an average guy and I like to ride and I'm just out there, you know, I'm not trying to make money off of this. I'm just trying to help you guys out. And uh, I'm doing this anyway, so I just figured I'd take the extra time and, and kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it, um, just to help you guys out. So. Um, yeah, so leave me any feedback or questions in the comment section, and I will definitely uh, get back to you. Again, thanks for watching. This has been uh, Ride Wrench Repeat. I'm Maintenance Mike. Uh, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you next time.